Hey guys, Chris from Adaptuition here, and in this video, I'm going to show you why the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So let's get straight to it. So the first thing we're going to need is a circle. So let's get a circle going there. Now we need a cyclic quadrilateral inside of the circle. So let's get that going too, and let's label the vertices A, B, C, D. And I want you to notice that all of the vertices lie on the circumference of the circle. If any of the vertices or more than one of them do not lie on the circumference, they lie inside the circle or outside the circle, then that shape would not be a cyclic quadrilateral and this rule would not apply. Now, what is the rule that we're trying to apply here? That the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. So opposite angles in this case are A and C and B and D. And supplementary means that they add up to 180 degrees. Now, how are we gonna prove that? Well, first things first, let's get rid of those arrows. Okay, and let's get the center of the circle identified in this diagram here, right there. And why do we need the center? Because we are going to need radii. Let's get four radii, one going to each vertex. And you're going to notice that these radii now cut up this bigger quadrilateral into four triangles. And not just any type of triangle, an isosceles triangle. Why isosceles? Because in each and every one of these triangles, two of the sides are radii and all radii are equal in length and any triangle that has two sides equal to each other in length is an isosceles triangle okay now let's consider each of these triangles one at a time so let's start with the first one top obc now not only are two sides equal but two angles are equal so we're going to call those angles w now let's go across to the next triangle on the right hand side there i think that was that was an orange right okay we're going to call those angles there x the one on the bottom here now, we're going to put that one in purple, we'll call those angles Y. And the one on the left side closest to me, we're going to put that one in red, and we're going to call those angles Z. Now, what does that have to do with anything? Well, let's disappear these radii once again, and let's consider the quadrilateral as a whole. There's a very simple and fundamental rule that everyone should know, which is that the sum of the angles in any given quadrilateral is 360 degrees. So, if we start from the top and we go clockwise, we have W, W, X, X, Y, Y, Z, Z. If we add up all of those, we get 360 degrees. On top of which, X and X is 2X, and we have two, sorry, two W's, two X's, two Y's, two Z's. So that's still gonna be equal to 360. We'll factorize out the two, just to make sure that when we divide by two, it's easy to see that W plus X plus Y plus Z is equal to 180 degrees. Now, how does this apply here? Well, Think about it. The two angles A and C that were opposite to each other, they were broken up into two pieces. On that side with C, we have W and X, and on this side with A, we have Y and Z. So if we add all of the components of A and C together, we'll be adding W, X, and Y and Z all together, which gives us 180. Similarly, at <coughs> sorry, B and D, if we consider all, all the components of those two angles, we have W, X, Y, and Z again. So W plus X plus Y plus Z is equal to 180 degrees. And we've, just, we've therefore shown that the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. Now we're not done, so don't, don't run away just yet. Okay, I have one more thing I wanna show you guys, and it has to do with the external angle of a cyclic quadrilateral. Now, for us to have an external angle, we're gonna to need to produce one of these sides. Um, what does produce means? It means simply extend that side past the vertex. So I'm going to extend the, the, line, the side AD past D down on that side, and I'm going to put in an external angle. So we want to show that this external angle is equal to the opposite interior or interior opposite angle. In that case, I think that would be up at B, up on that side there. Now, how are we going to do this? Hmm. Well, let's see. Let's introduce the internal angle opposite to B and on the opposite side of the exterior angle there. We see that these two angles down on this side lie on a straight line. And the angle on a straight line is, what? 180 degrees, that's correct, very good. Which means therefore that the internal angle plus the external angle will give us 180 degrees, right? So that's D internal plus D external is 180 degrees. Now, let's, let's, let's consider what we just saw in the previous set of stuff I talked about, that the, the internal angles, the opposite internal angles are supplementary. They also add up to 180. So D interior plus B would also be equal to 180 degrees. Hmm. Now, all we have to do is solve for the external and B. So if you go back to that first equation with the internal and external components of D, to solve for the external component, what do we have to do? We'd have to subtract the internal component from both sides of the equation. 
which gives B, sorry, D external equal to 180 minus D internal. Now, let's go to the second equation, which is where we had B plus the internal part of D equal to 180. To solve for B, we'd have to subtract the internal part of D from 180 degrees. Now look at that. The equations for both the external portion of D and for the internal, well, angle B, they're the same, which means that B is equal to the external angle outside of D, which once was, sorry, <laughs> which shows that the external angle of a cyclic quadrilateral is equal to the interior opposite angle. All right, guys, so there you have it. That is why the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral are supplementary. What I suggest is you can get a pencil and a piece of paper, watch over this video, draw off the diagram, and try this proof for yourself, right? When, when I was learning these proofs, which was not too long ago, I drew them over a couple dozen times and tried to figure stuff out, and I found it really rewarding. At times, it was really frustrating because my working went nowhere, and I had to go and get different ideas about how to approach these problems. But that, see that there, how you figure out problems? That is what math is about, not just memorizing these rules. Okay, guys? Anyhow, I don't want to get too preachy and have this video go on too long. So I want to thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, please feel free to give that like button a hit. And if you haven't subscribed yet, well, I don't know what you're waiting on. And share this video with anybody else who you think might benefit from it. Anyhow, guys, as I always say, you can be anything you want to be. You can do anything you want to do. If you have the correct mindset and you put in the work, you're bound to have some trouble in your learning journey. So please don't be afraid to ask for help. And if what you are doing is not working, you need to try a different approach to it. Adapt. Because change is the only constant. Alright guys, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. Bookshelf. Bookshelf.